Hi everybody, Martin at Flicking Feathers again today. Tying another Perdigon, and this is the Gasolina. Right, it's one of the sort of classic Perdigons. It's, it's a fantastic wee fly. Very simple, but really, really effective. You can tie them sort of a standard version like this, or if you want it to, you could add a hot collar. Probably do both to be honest, they're, they're really worth having in your box. As always, I'll put a materials list in the description along with a link to the Patreon page for anybody who wants to support the channel, get access to the monthly fly tying classes, and enter the giveaways. Alternatively, you can hit the like button, that always helps, and watch the video all the way through. That helps the channel to grow. So, I've got my hook in my vise, and this is a size 16. Uh, I'm using the Fuller Mill Jig Force here, black nickel. Use whatever hook you like. It doesn't have to be a jig hook. You can use an ordinary nymph hook. Entirely up to you, it's personal preference. I've got a 3 mil copper bead, but you can go bigger or smaller. And obviously you can adjust the hook go up to a 14 and then all the way down to like a 22, 24. Perdigons work best when they're small. So I'm ready for my tail and I'm using some Coq de Leon but if you want to you can just use hackle fibres it doesn't really matter for the fish's point of view. So I'm just grabbing say half a dozen fibres and taking them out from the stem so that the tips line up and I'll tear them away. Length, well I like sort of a body length or a shank length, it's about that. Just change hands and I'll come in just pinch it in on top, take a turn back and have a look at the length of your tail. It's just a shade too long. That's it. I don't know how well you can see the tail on the video, but basically, shank length is what I'm after. Right, it's the shank length, and you push the bead a wee bit, but we're in there, and that's just about right. The main thing is keeping it sparse and trim the waist away, the length of the body. I'm going to come up and touch and turns and as I wind, I'm applying pressure on the bobbin as I, put, as I come towards myself. I'm releasing the pressure on the way over, tightening, and what that does, it stops the material um, creeping round the hook, right, I've kept it all nice and smooth on top. I'm just going to tidy that up there and lock the bead, I don't mind the bead being locked now. The body, I'm using Hens Perdigon body and the colour I'm using is number 34. Um, you could also use 32, looks quite good and it does work well. I don't think you need to be super fussy with this exact shade. You want something that's sort of greeny coppery tone. And I reckon this, I think this is actually the original colour, um, but I've got one here, tied with 32. Very similar, slightly maybe a bit more red in it but whatever you like the fish don't care I'm just going to take this back and touch and turns be careful don't stretch it you don't want to warp it or ruin the pearly shine and up the body again touch and turns keep it nice and smooth 
right? I'm going to come back, say two thirds of the way, T again touch and turns, come back to about there, and open wrap, so I'm at the one third mark, and then I'll come up and touch and turns. And that is enough of a taper for me. I want to keep it slim, compact, and fast sinking. Now I'm going to come up with the rib, uh, the tinsel, sorry, and keep these turns slightly overlapping so there's no spaces. And when you get to the front, I like to catch it off right on top and sort of pull with the thread and force it into that slot of the bead. And I'll trim away my waist in the cavity and then I don't have to worry about any sticking up bits of tinsel. Now if you want the collar, change threads now. Right, but I'm going to just come back that thorax length, just a wee wall of thorax. And just bring it up so that the taper is continuous, right? That you will have built a bit of extra taper with the tinsel. And then I'm going to leave the thread hanging at the back of the thorax and come in with my whip finish tool and run the knot forward and I've used I don't know five or six turns there and I'm really going to tighten it flex the hook make sure the knot's seated and then it's just a case of I pull it tight and I come in with a single side of my scissor and push it against it and because I've got that long knot and I've stretched it there as I cut it the tag end of the thread sort of retreats into the into the whip finish so I've got a nice smooth look, surface all the way around the fly and that makes a better pair they gone right if you've got wee tags of thread then you put the resin on it ends up hard right wee spiky bits on it and that's just not very nice I mean again it probably doesn't affect it as a fishing fly but it's nice if you've got nice flies in your box. So I'm using UV resin here. Um, to be honest, I'm just as happy using varnish on these. Um, but I'm using UV resin because the person I'm tying these for asked me to use re resin. Um, fine. So I'm just making sure I've coated all of the body. Let it hang there. For a second, just to make sure, give it a couple of turns to make sure it's even, and then I'll hit it with the light. Now, see, I don't even think UV resin is actually faster in total tying time than varnish, right? I'm going to give this another coat. If I give something two coats of varnish, I, I don't need to cure it with a light. I, I just get the varnish on, set it aside to dry, and what happens is the varnish actually, you can rely on it to shrink and to shape. Um, so you don't need to be messing around too much, shaping it and making sure you've got a nice form in the same way as you do with the UV resin so you don't get lumps just a wee touch more um, and by the time you've tied half a dozen flies you're ready for the second coat of varnish and then you just do that and each coat of varnish 
probably take slightly less time than coating and manipulating the UV resin and you don't have to spend 10-15 seconds per fly, per coat, curing it with a light. And what I actually like to do as well, just to make sure that the resin is fully cured all the way through, is I put it in a salon lamp. Right? When I've got, say, 30, 40 perdigons here, I'll put it in. I bought a cheap salon lamp on Amazon. And I put them all in there and let them bake for 20 minutes. And then you get a really nice, clear finish. Doesn't matter which resin you use, it's always tack free and it never yellows. But anyway, there you go. There's the gasolina. Like I say, tie them like this. Tie them with a hot collar. You, you'll not go wrong with them, they're really, really good. So I hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up below and I'll see you for another video. Tight lines, guys. Bye.